I'm sure you've already listened to a music on a YouTube channel like NCS or Trap Nation. And I'm also certain that you notice the effect they display, a reactive audio visualizer that responds to the current music. I always wondered how to do that, and today we'll see how to achieve this effect. And we'll see that with a small piece of music, we can do a lot of stuff. Let's start with the basics. What is music? Music is a sound wave. That means it's perturbation that spread in matter with time. For example, in the air, the sound moves at 340 meters per second. Because yes, the speed of sound depends on the material it spreads into. In water, the speed of sound is 1500 meters per second. Because this fluid is denser than the air but also it attenuates faster. To create sound, speakers have a membrane that oscillates to create the perturbation in the air. Our guitar strings vibrate at different frequencies to create different tones. To hear sound, our ears have small receptors which react to certain frequencies. Each receptor that is activated sends a signal, and then the brain reconstitutes the sound by adding all of the signals together. It is the exact same process with microphones, but instead of cells, it is a membrane which converts air vibration into electrical current. I've said a few times the term frequency, but what is it? A wave has two characteristics, its amplitude and its frequency. The higher the amplitude is, the louder the sound will be. A higher frequency results in a higher pitch. The frequency is measured in Hertz. A human baby can hear from 12 to 12,000 Hertz and an average adult from 12 to 16,000 Hertz. The human voice stands between 512 Hertz and 2048 Hertz, for example. There are multiple types of waves. The sine wave is the most common when we're talking about waves. But with computers, we can create square waves triangular waves, etc. But music is more complex than that, right? Because it is a composition of these waves. We can also say that it is a sum of sine waves, and we can represent them mathematically. For example, adding these two sine waves together results in this wave. And if I keep adding sine waves with particular amplitude and frequency infinitely, it will result in this example in a sawtooth wave that we can hear now. If you want more information on that, check out the video from 3Blue1Brown on the subject. It is great. And because a sine wave is described by its amplitude and frequency, we can store the data in a list that we'll call the spectrum of the sound. Let's say that each index of the list represents a frequency and each value the corresponding amplitude. For example, if I play a sine wave with a frequency of 100 and an amplitude of 2, our list will only have a single value at the index 100, which is 2. The list is huge, with 12,000 values in it. And at each frame of our simulation, we repopulate the list with the new data. But now we know exactly at any moment what compose our music. To create the effect of an audio visualizer, we need a support to transform these numbers into movement. The easiest way is to create a cube and instantiate it a hundred of time. The first represents the first frequency, the second, the second frequency, etc. Of course, we can't just put 20,000 cubes in a scene and scale them at the same time. It would be super laggy. We'll instead use fewer cubes. Because we have too much data, we will calculate an average for each cube. Let's say we instantiate 512 cubes. In Unity, the spectrum function returns a maximum of 8,192 samples which represents our 12,000 values. We can just divide the number of samples by the number of cubes, which gives us 16 values per cube. 
Then, we will simply calculate the average and scale the cubes on a certain axis, depending on this average. And there we go! The result is not that nice, right? It's because in music, the frequencies after 3000 Hz are not representative of what's happening. Indeed, Trap Nation's effect barely represents such frequencies. They focus on the bases. I'm going to zoom 16 times. This way, we now have values between 1 and 1250 Hz. It's enough to cover a human voice and a lot of instruments. I'm also going to apply a shift of 12 Hz from the start, because the lowest frequencies are also not representative, since they can be constant or barely audible. And now we have a nice effect. But we can do better. First, for each frame, we are going to detect the highest amplitude, set it to a max value and set the other relative to this one, to avoid having two bigger cubes. We will also apply a smooth effect, because right now what we see is too sharp. It is quite simple. A function looks for each cube, its four neighbors to the left and four to the right, calculates the average scale and set it to the corresponding cube. Now it is way smoother than before. We can now add particles, which will spread from the circle to the border of our screen, and which speed depends on the basis. We'll simply look at the first 10 cubes, calculate their average and set the speed based on that. And finally, let's add a glow and a chromatic aberration effect to the scene. And there we go.